Welcome back to the Pondley Hockey Post Game Show. I'm Devin Caney. It is time for our Diamond Debate presented by Mark's Jewelers. Uh, they definitely hooked me up for this last show of the season for Super Bowl 57. Uh, got some green and diamond rings, bracelets, two necklaces, and these earrings. Uh, unfortunately, the Eagles couldn't complement it with their own Super Bowl 57 ring. But guys, let's get right to it with this diamond debate. Who is most to blame or even what is most to blame for the Eagles Super Bowl loss? Uh, and I know you guys have been covering this throughout the start of the show, our options, and you can weigh in if you're tuning in on the community page on YouTube and also uh, on the Jacob Sports Twitter page. Uh, coaching is currently winning with 45.7%, uh, then pass rush, officiating, and then other. Uh, now coaching I know is pretty broad because there is one coach uh, in Jonathan Gannon who you can point to and then you can also point to some play calling Seth. I know you kind of mentioned that especially on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, so I don't know who wants to start. Who do you blame and what or what do you blame for the Eagles loss? I, I think you have to look at the coaching staff. I mean you, you look at how they played in the first half. You come out and you score 20, 24 points in the first half. Seems like you know you're moving the ball at will and you're scoring at will and then you come out in the second half and you can really get nothing going in the second half of this football game you know now you're going to tell me Steve Spagnuolo changed that much of what they were doing defensively to prevent you from continuing to score when they could do nothing with you in the first half so where's your adjustments and then secondly where's the adjustments on the on, on the offensive side of the ball well on the defensive side of the ball I mean Patrick Mahomes came out, they had four possessions in the, in the second half, and they scored three touchdowns in the field goal to win the game in the second half, and you had no answer whatsoever while sitting back playing a very passive style defense. Listen, if it's not working, if what you're doing isn't working from a passivity standpoint, then at some point, you know, you just got to say, okay, we got to throw caution to the winds. We got great cornerbacks, we got good safety, great safeties, and we got one of the best slot corners, you know, in the game. Guys, you're just going to have to bear up and get this done we, we, because we have to run some blitzes. we got to get pressure on Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I, I'm, D Gun, I'm trying to figure out when he took off for that long run, that 28-yard scramble, you know, were, were they in a four- or five-man front? Uh, I believe they were in a four-man front. So everybody else was back in coverage. And if you look at the play, a lot of the flow was to the opposite side of the field. That's why he was able to step up and take off to the left. Had a wide open lane for 26 yards. Down you know, I, and, and I'll say this. I, in, in watching this game today, the Eagles created a lot of problems for teams, you know, when they got to a point in their pass rush where they started running games. They were running a lot of TE stunts, a lot of ET stunts, a, little T, a lot of TT stunts, and some swaps, you know, where they crash everybody down and loop a guy around. You realize we didn't really see a whole lot to, uh, of that today. No. We saw a whole lot of man-to-man, -man, one on one rushing, yes. whether it was five-man yes. or four-man, and we just could not apply pressure to Patrick Mahomes. I am with the majority right now. I'm blaming it on the coaching. You have multitudes of defensive players or pro, uh, uh, defensive players who were pro bowlers or pro bowl alternates. Your defense was stacked like you've never seen before on this defense. You went out and compiled all these stats, bu playing bully ball against everybody. You showed that offense of Kansas City way too much respect mm -hmm. because they, it's not like they had a burner on that offense. They had a, some decent wide receivers. They didn't have Tyreek Hill over there. you giving these dudes seven to five-yard cushions, and you're allowing them to run wide open across the middle of the field and on the outside routes as well. You never make an adjustment. You didn't call anything to make an adjustment. They adjusted to you. You are supposed to counter. You have the personnel to counter. Three-fourths of your secondary could have made the Pro Bowl this year, okay? You never made the necessary adjustments. You showed, you showed them too much respect. You played a fearful defense, basically, is what they did. They played fear defense. He's so concerned about not letting anything get behind him. And as I said earlier in the show, you look at the Kansas City secondary. They got a bunch of kids playing back there. They're up there playing press coverage. Now, they got burned for a touchdown. They got burned throughout the game. Steve Spagnola did not stop playing press coverage. Jonathan Gannon's crew, I don't think he, I saw him play press more than four times in the whole game, Seth. 
Well, how much of that comes down to, I know a big narrative, of course, coming into this game was the lack of experience Eagles' entire coaching staff really had, aside from a few, compared to Andy Reid and this Kansas City Chiefs. When it comes to playing in these massive games like the Super Bowl, it's not well, a new it, thing to the a, Chiefs. It, is it experience serious, or is it preparation it, or both? It, it, there was a serious lack of aggression in this game. Now, whether, right. whether they, they lumped up uh, their defensive coaches, their coordinator was afraid to, to be aggressive, but... Somewhere along the line, Devin, also, a defensive player has to make a play. You know, you can't just throw it on the defensive coordinator. I get it. He had a lack of aggression. But but Slay and Maddox got, got okie doke on a play. Reddick and, and Sweat from the end, they weren't really factors. There wasn't anybody that stood out on the defensive line with that rotation that had served them well all year. C.J. Gardner-Johnson made some plays. He looked like the best player they had on defense. Nobody else really made an impactful yeah. play on defense. Yeah. No, and but the point is, see, you want to absolve the defense. I don't want to absolve them. Okay. I didn't absolve okay. them at all. Well, I was going to say a, an, uh, an option that I did not list that I guess kind of falls under defense and just like their lack of, of making any plays, especially in the second half. How much of that is credit to the Chiefs' offense and their offensive line for protecting Mahomes? Well, you're competing. So, you know, obviously they didn't get a sack today. So if you didn't get a sack, you got to give them, you know, some, some yeah. of the credit. But I'm not saying you're, you're absolving the, the defense coordinator, but the coordinator's job, his job is, okay, I got 11 pieces on the board, okay? How do I deploy it, okay? And if you're deploying them one way and it's not working, well, you damn well better have another way to deploy them because guess what? Your opponent is just going to keep exploiting you and exploiting you and exploiting you I totally until, agree until you. you figure out a way to change. Now. Because the Eagles' pass rush was so prolific this year, okay, it was okay to give Jonathan Gannon a pass. Because how do you argue with four guys with double-digit sacks? 70 sacks, you break the, 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 the team sack record, okay? The number two defense in the National Football League. How do you argue with that? I mean, I even got no, to a I, point. I, 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 wait a minute, Mike. Even yeah. I got to a point, you know, where I was like, okay, let me step back and give Jonathan Gannon the benefit of the doubt. Where deep down the side, I knew full well, full well, that a lack of aggression would bite them in the ass at some point. I got it. He, it, it. I said lack of aggression, and, and that's the defensive coordinator's responsibility. But again, you always talk about eye discipline, players making plays. What, what was the eye discipline on the Maddox and Slay plays? They, 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 they turned their eyes away from the play. They, they lost the focus of the play. Hey, hey listen, sometimes, you know, if if you don't talk about things pre-snap, then the same way you try to speed the quarterback's clock up, your clock gets sped up, okay? So now they start to see the motion come down, and they're afraid that the guy's going to go in motion all the way across. So now you're trying to have this conversation with a guy way on the other side of the formation. And, and the undisciplined part is when a guy goes in motion, I got to be able to have peripheral vision where I can see my guy and see the guy over on the other side and with hand signals tell him what I want to do. What happened with Maddox and what happened with, with Slay is that they put their eyes across to see the guy on the other side and lost vision of the guy who they were supposed to be, be covering. And the ball snapped and boom. he. It's too late. In and come and, right back and out. that's it's their fault. Yeah, that's late. what I'm saying about guys being able to make a play. Those guys are experienced guys, Seth. You know, they, they, they turned their heads completely away from the play. Preparation, preparation, go. preparation, my friend. Preparation, okay? Preparation. The way, the, way that you, the way that you practice is the way that you play. And piss poor preparation causes terrible play. So that falls under Jonathan Gannon in terms of, of blaming someone. Now, look, I know it's a, a team effort, a loss, a win, no matter what. Like, everyone is to blame in a way. But I'm just still – I can't wrap – I'm still kind of recovering from this, and I think we all will be for a while. Why did this happen, and how did it happen? And, you know, moving forward with this Eagles team, how did they prevent it from happening again when it comes to preparation? You know, is that on the players? Is that on Jonathan Gannon? Does that fall to Nick Sirianni? Well, I mean – so, so my my biggest problem with it is that Slay got beat on it one series. They come back the next series and they score on the same type of play on the other side. So what kind of conversation was going on on the sideline to address the problem right. of 
Slay getting it's a communication beat issue. before. I mean, you know, it's one thing. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Okay, because you're not gonna beat me with the same damn play. At least not, not the next series. Not the next series. Exactly. I mean, Slay and Bradbury yeah. and 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 Gardner yeah. Johnson yeah. And, and, Maddox. and and Maddox, they should have been having some conversation on the sideline. And the defensive coach should have been the defensive secondary coach should have been having some some conversation on the sideline when they came off to talk about what the adjustment is going to be if they run this motion again. Do, do I lock? Do I pass? Are we comboing it? What are we going to do? Because we're not going to get beat by the same thing again. I'll be damned if it didn't happen the very next series. Yeah, here's, we, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. We, we talk about it being, uh, let's start with the coaching at, at the top of the pyramid in terms of what went wrong for this team. But we also know it's a game of inches and execution. Prime example, Sayamalo, false start. Oh, takes the potential. It's a third and one. It's those, little, and it's those little moments and those penalties that you, even the Hurts fumble. And I'm not saying the loss is all on Hurts, but yeah. that Quez, kills you. Quez Watkins drops the ball and we right. put him in scoring position. Mm -hmm. You see Kansas City dropping many passes today? You see them making many mental mistakes in this game today? And I can't get over the fact, as inexperienced as their defense was, they took their lumps, but they didn't buckle. They mm -hmm. kept coming. The Eagles never came after Kansas City. Mm -hmm. You had the much better personnel. You had a bunch of pro bowlers on the side of the ball. You showed that man way too much respect. We know he's he is the epitome of prof uh, at the top of the quarterback pyramid in the National Football League right now. It doesn't mean you fear him. You go out there and you attack him. The man's playing on one foot. He hurt the foot in the first half. You let him settle in in the second half and walk down the field not once, not twice, three times and put touchdowns in the on, in your backside. And the fourth time, put a field goal, game-winning field goal on your backside. I will ask you, and, and, and again, here's my here's my question. Okay, if a team goes ten plays, twelve plays, and scores a touchdown, is it any worse than if you're playing aggressive and they go? Three plays to score a touchdown, it's still seven points, right? Yep, absolutely. So you might as well play aggressive. Exactly. You know what Kansas right. City did? They got beat deep. They gave up chunks of real estate. Did they keep coming? Never back down. They no, never and, back and, down. And to, and to your point, listen, the Eagles' strength, they sacked the quarterback. They especially sacked it with Hassan Reddick. Well, he wasn't getting there today. And he's a straight angle rusher where he attacks the right shoulder of the offensive tackle, right? Well, he wasn't getting home doing that. So you're right. The defensive coordinator or the defensive coaching staff has to uh, change it up, maybe run some stunts, maybe blitz, get more aggressive. Yeah. you got to get those guys home on the quarterback. And they didn't get home all day. Like in the floor of the game, you could tell that, you know, the pass rush wasn't getting there. They got close a couple of times. They even had Mahomes in the pocket dead to rights a few times. Yes. But they couldn't get off the blocks, you know, to get to him. Exactly. But, you know, in situations like that, that's the one time, that's the – that's the time where you have the ability to bring a late blitzer. Once the protection declares itself and you got a late runner to the ball, you know, to the quarterback, and you got a guy that's coming that can, that, that can help you out. But they're so hell-bent on trying to stay as solid on the back end and not give up the big play that they're afraid to bring the extra guy from time to time. They're afraid to, you know, show a blitz and then drop in the zone. I mean, today we just lined up like statues and played. We didn't ever show blitz and then come out. If we showed it, the guys got antsy. I mean, we're sitting there watching the game That's degun, right. and That's what right. did I say? Yep. I said, here they come. Yep. You know, I could tell you every single time. So yep. if I could see it, you want to tell me the greatest, the best quarterback in the game today that Can't he see. didn't see it? That's right. So you got to be able to disguise what you want to do. You got to be able to disguise when you want to come, and you got to be able to show them that you're coming and then drop out and play coverage behind it, whether it's man or whether it's zone. Uh, I'm looking at some of the comments coming out of the locker room from players, and I know a lot of Eagle fans were screaming about the refs favoring Kansas City, especially in the James Bradbury holding play. Bradbury came out in the locker room and said basically – he takes accountability for it. I got to give him a lot of respect for this. Absolutely. He said, I take accountability. He said, it was holding. He said, I was hoping the refs would just let it go. Oh, he said that. Oh, he said, I was hoping the refs would let it go. Wow. Now, okay. in a game like this, everybody's holding. Everybody's cheating. 
He just got caught with his hand in the cookie jar at that wow. particular time. Yeah, I mean, literally, NFL is rigged is, is trending on Twitter because a lot of people are saying that that call was, they was not that uh, legit. But <laughs> Def, Def, it is can, what it is. You can call it. You can call the penalty on every play if you really wanted to. If you really stop and you look at it in its totality, you know, you can call something every single time. But let me tell you something. The reason why, the reason why in professional football you see, you see um, penalties is because nine times out of ten, a player is beat mm -hmm. and he's out of position. Right. And he's trying to get back in position. That's why your technique and your fundamentals are so important. That's why your eyes are so important. For for James Bradbury there, listen, I tip my hat to him because the hardest thing to do is to stand up in front of the world yes. and say, I take a, a, accountability you know, for a play that was monumental in the loss of a Super Bowl. But I also feel like, you know, Gosh, you know, if that's your guy, man, get your eyes on your guy. Let your guy's eye and his body language let you know what's going on so you're in good position to be able to play the game. I see our defensive backs get caught up so many times being out of position because they're trying to see what the hell the quarterback is doing. If I'm in man coverage, I don't give a damn what he's doing because if that ball's in the air and, and, and I'm in phase and I'm in the right position, guess what? His eyes are going to tell me everything that I need. Right. I, everything that I need to know. Well, and, and the thing is, uh, whether you like that call, didn't like that call, it, it should have never come down to that, right? If the Eagles did what they needed to do in the second half, it shouldn't have. Uh, we will have much more discussion. That wraps up our diamond debate, but we will have much more discussion on the Pond the Hockey postgame show coming up after this break. We'll have the Jeff D'Ambrosio Auto Group drive.